I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I really, really, really wanna say good things. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> listeners. It is my week, my turn. The turntables have turned to me. You know what I'll say <laughs> is this hour and 25 minute movie drained me more than the three hour Godfather movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right off the bat. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Are we starting with the tiometer? Are oh, we doing this in no, reverse order today? No, Are just, you just going to jump so, to it? I'm just so mentally taxed right now. Yeah, tell us a little bit, Ty, about just... Okay, first... <laughs> hi. First off, hello. Hello, welcome. Uh, welcome to episode three. Uh, hello, you uh, you going you to watch this? You're going <laughs> to come here on the podcast with us now, aren't you? Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> All right, you just sound straight up just like Cockney from like the 1600s. You gotta, you gotta level it up a little bit. <laughs> all right, all right. Somebody say they want leveled up a bit. Again, you just always sound like a sailor. In the I think I sound like Liza Doolittle's dad. <laughs> my fair lady. That's like my Cockney oh, all the time. Yeah. Oh, Liza, you go here, all right. You know what I'm saying about that. God. So gravelly. <laughs> so much gravel. Woo! All right, listeners. This week, the journey has come full circle. We watched Spice World. Spice World. Spice up your life. Ty, before we get uh, into it, let's just maybe <laughs> talk about why you are so exhausted. Tell us, did you guys know that it's like almost impossible to find this movie online. Ty. Oh my gosh. Why don't you let the listeners in on a little secret tell them what you had to do? Well, I don't remember <laughs> even where I was. I got lost. Down. I probably gave my computer at least 15 viruses. Mm. I would like this. This is not available on any streaming service. Nope. So I would love to say, hey guys, go watch this for yourselves. But it's impossible. No, the you... links on iTunes say it's like only available in the UK. Yeah. yeah. So if you are a United States listener and you want to watch this, just prepare yourselves. You're going to do some digging. Mm -hmm. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Type in Spice World Streaming USA, and then there will be random sketchy-ass websites <laughs> with tons of pop-ups flying at you. That's what you want. Yeah. Because one of those won't give you a virus, and it actually will play it while it gives you the virus. <laughs> That's what you want. No idea what the name of it is, uh, but because I'm not going to give them any credit anyway because they had so many stupid pop-ups the whole time. Yeah. But. We made a deal with the internet devil, and we don't know when we're going to pay the piper. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's already paying right now. It's like destroying my computer as oh, we speak. Worth it, though. A thousand what? percent. What's a it? thousand percent. What's it worth it? Would we say that? Would we, would we say she's chubby? <laughs> yes, we would. We would say that so much. Ty. Oh. I've been looking forward to this part. Oh, I'm sure you've loved, you love this next question. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm so excited from all the times when you have drugged me through the mud with Mortal Kombat. There's been 10 tournaments. There's, <laughs> this is number 10. Nine, they've lost. They lose this next one. They lose to Outworld, and then the planet gets turned over. What more do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. Give our viewers a, a synopsis of Spice World. You're on the clock. Go. Spice World is a movie about nothing. <laughs> Sp True. <laughs> Sp Continue. Spice World is a movie about a new okay. If we're gonna really try to create a plot, let's try to formulate what they the shit they threw together into a plot. Here's what I gathered. Let's hear. There is a newspaper guy who helped g make the Spice Girls famous, and who now decides he is going to ruin their careers by posting like tabloid-esque things that pictures and stories that are talking about how stupid they are. Because he wants to sell more papers. Because he wants to sell more papers and he's sick of the Spice Girls. Yep. He made them, he's going to break them. But really, it's a story outside of a story that's about a guy pitching a Spice Girls movie to their manager and saying <laughs> why they want. But it's also, if you look at the credits, it's also a movie about a movie about a movie 
because it's like here's the scripts that they're handed at the beginning that the Spice Girls had created that were trying to sell all these characters on what they're going to be doing, except for the writer is still the writer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that that's pretty much the plot. And it's a series of vignettes. Yes. It's a series of Monty Python style vignettes. That's yeah. I that's a, a good comp in the in the style and the feel of just the yep. randomness of it for yep. sure. It's yeah, and or if you've seen the Beatles movies, have you ever seen the Beatles movies? I have not, but that's interesting that you bring they those are up. So similar to this, and yes. guys, I love the Beatles as much as everybody loves the Beatles. Yeah. Beatles over Stones, not even a question. Why are we even having this argument? <laughs> but the Beatles movies are horrible (laughs) they are so hard to get through and the whole time i was watching this movie i was like this is just like the beatles movies these are just like these random ass series of vignettes they're so hard to get through Mm -hmm. sorry we don't have to no that's that's actually we'll talk about that and we'll talk about other movies that singers are in and we can do a little ranking piece well i hope crossroads is better than this (laughs) otherwise i have dug my own grave (laughs) But yes, this movie gets compared to Hard Day's Night, the Beatles movie, a lot. Just because of it being a band playing themselves in a movie. It's Mm -hmm. not like a band taking on other characters in a movie or telling a new story. They're themselves. But in that Beatles movie, too, they're just like these weird-ass little vignettes. Like, I'm writing things in the bathtub right now. What are you doing, Paul? Hey, I'm over here. I'm doing this right now. What are you up to? <laughs> like, they're just doing stupid shit Together the whole mixed movie. up. I know, probably. <laughs> hey, what's going on over there, Ringo? <laughs> like, they just, they're doing yeah, nothing in that whole movie. It's random. Silliness and randomness. When the world is in trouble, when our future is in danger, we call upon one man. But when he's busy... He calls Five Girls. Columbia Pictures presents The Spice Girls. All right, we're coming. Why do you Why do you keep wanting to jump to the end? I feel like you just keep wanting for me to ask you what you because, think about this movie, but I'm not ready to tell you yet. I don't want to hurt the Brits. I don't want to hurt the British audience. Okay. So I'm just trying to be very careful. Yeah, be be careful. Because we have a, I a love the British. Fo- I love the, the Brits. <laughs> I love you, Brits. <laughs> So I got to be careful okay? because I've hurt feelings in the past. Yeah. Remember what I did to Bridget Jones' diary? Uh, whose feelings were hurt about that? You don't remember? There are people who's got oh. their feelings hurt. Sure. So I got to be careful. Well, that's a good I gotta movie. I got to tread carefully. So that's not why. a good movie. That's a terrible movie. <laughs> don't apologize for their bad movies. It's based on Pride and Prejudice. I know, which is better than that. <laughs> Oh, I haven't even gotten off like the first paragraph on my format here. <laughs> so this film came out in 1997. 1997! Yeah. Um, I believe I saw this film fifth, or, fifth or sixth grade. Tell me in the theaters. I might have seen it in theaters. <laughs> I might have. I don't remember. I don't have that memory. Uh-huh. But yes. maybe. Oh, yeah. I don't want to say I did. In I've, seventh grade, that's what, how old we were? No, 97? No, we would have been... 97, we would have been 10. We would have been fourth grade. Fourth grade. I probably saw it in fifth grade. Okay. What? You're probably going to get into this. I'm getting into a lot of things if you give me a chance. I think that the Spice Girls' longevity wasn't very much in my mind. It was not. Okay, okay. Yeah. Good. It's like a flash in the pan. Yeah, but they made a freaking movie. Yeah. Okay, go and, ahead. I'm... And when they make the movie, it's fascinating. Okay, I can't wait. Go. Are I'm you just ready? So, I'm just so excited to talk oh, like Spice ready? Girls in general. Yeah, there's so much to cover here. All right. Oh, boy. It's hard because like I want to talk about the movie creation, but then I also need to uh, I have a whole section on just like Spice Girls beginning, middle and end, future, all of those pieces. Yep. So I'm trying to think of how to start this. Do I start with just the movie stuff and then we get into the in-depth piece or do we start with the in-depth piece of the Spice Girls and then I when we get to the movie time frame I tell you about it. I think we need to know about the Spice Girls. <sighs> all right. I think we have to start at the beginning. Let's start at the very beginning. Sorry if that throws you off at all, but like nope, just scrolling just, down four pages. I got this. <laughs> I, I just think I just think we need a background of the group yep. before we hit this movie. Sure. Absolutely. So, picture this. Yes. 1994. Ooh, 4. 1994. We're 7. We we're in first grade. Sure. Yeah, we don't we don't need to always like say how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're young middle 30s. <laughs> An advertisement goes out 
It reads, are you, these are letters, mm -hmm. are you 18 to 23 with ability to sing slash dance? Are you streetwise, outgoing, ambitious, and dedicated? <laughs> Pretty much a Slytherin. <laughs> 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 Then come audition for a girl group. Around this time, it was all about the boy bands. Well, because this would have been New Kids on the Block? Mm -hmm. 90, early 90s, mm -hmm. 94? Early 90s. I think even... I guess they were a little even before that, though. Yeah, yeah. But just like around... And I don't know what was going on in the UK. They might have had their own version of pop boy bands yep. and stuff. But it was all boys. Yeah. No matter what, it was pretty much but boys. But we weren't... Let's not confuse things, though. We were not to BSB era. We weren't to not BSB, yet. NSYNC, we were not. Town. All those guys hadn't no. came yet. And girls groups, I want to say that we had TLC around this time. Yeah, they, maybe Waterfalls, we were just starting Waterfalls came out in 95, okay. I think, because mm -hmm. I think it was... Or maybe 96, because it was... Oh, we were in second grade. <laughs> Stop saying the grades. Stop saying Sorry, that. Sorry, that's, that's what I know. Don't go chasing <laughs> waterfalls. They sang it all the time, second grade. All right. So 400 girls in the UK showed up to this audition. Ooh. Yes. Out of the initial audition, we get Posh Spice. Yep. Guess what she sang? Mine Hair for her. Mine Hair. I think that's the song from uh, Cabaret. Oh, Oh, she sang a cabaret she song? She sang a cabaret song. Her audition? Oh, yep. cool. Yep. She didn't know any like really big pop song. She was a musical theater kid. So okay, gotcha. <laughs> she sang that. Cool. Very, I think it stood her out from others. We get Mel B, who is Scary Spice. Okay. I'm going to use their names interchangeably. No, so. I, I think I appreciate that because I think it's important to know their names, and I used to know their names, and I just don't remember now. Yeah. So I think if you say both, yep. that will help So me. we have Victoria, and we have Mel B. Yep. We also Mel B is sporty. Mm -hmm. No, Mel, no B Mel B is, is scary. scary. Mel C is sporty. Mel C. We also get Mel C out of this. Mel yep. C is is sporty. Okay. Okay. We get those three yep. that come down to the final 12. We get a phone call from Jerry, Ginger Spice, oh, okay. who has missed the initial audition. I thought audition. you were going to say, there's a guy, the manager for the Backstreet Boys, his name is Jerry. I was like, no way. <laughs> He's involved with this group too. What? <laughs> yeah, it's like that Jerry. What Jerry? Some G guy named Jerry. Oh, is an agent named Jerry. All right. BSB and all right. All right. All right. Jerry missed the initial audition because she was visiting her grandma in Spain. She calls and says, hey, is this still going on? Do you think I could maybe come? They're like, we're down to the last 12. Yeah, come on. She's like, okay, you awesome. Know, that's... <laughs> I've done this before in auditions where you're like, I can't make it. And you immediately get into that callback round, round just because you couldn't make it. Even if you didn't earn your way there. I've done it, but it's still... How lucky is that? I know. Well, she even says she doesn't think that she would have made it had she been in the initial group. She yeah. would not have made it to the bottom 12. She said it was lucky for her that she got down to the bottom 12. Uh -huh. And then we also get Michelle Stephenson. Hmm. Baby? Michelle Stephenson? Does she ring a bell? Michelle Stephenson? Baby? No. Oh, not she's baby. not one of them. She's not one of them. Who's Michelle? Michelle Stephenson is one of the original members of the band touch this band was not called spice girls at first it was called touch oh that's the their name was touch the name was touch mm -hmm. now early on in the process this michelle gal ended up having to leave because her mom got sick and then also she wanted to go to college <laughs> what a loser what a lose. come on <laughs> invest in the career Lame. so about six months into this like kind of like training and creating this girl group we lose one we get emma Bunton, I had to look at her last name. Emma Bunton, baby. baby. We have the core group. The girls. The girls. How do you think you would do in one of these auditions? Oh, um, yeah, that's a great question. I'll be honest, though, like 400, I don't mean to sound cocky, but 400 doesn't sound terrible. Well, I mean, ACTF, think about that. What's that? Is that 400? KCACTF, there's an acting competition for those yeah. of you who don't know. But, like, I mean, yeah, there's usually three to 400 people. Mm -hmm. It's usually in the threes. Yeah. And that's how many people are doing it. And I freaking won it one year. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to the final 16 Ooh, multiple times. Humble, humble brag. I've barely not so ever brag. not gotten to the bottom 32. <laughs> so. What I'll say is I think I would have made a couple of rounds. It does come down to, I think, to like personality. They wanted people who are outgoing and fun and zany. So, well, let's, so that part let's maybe talk not about as that. much. What, what's your character? What is your girl band character? <laughs> who are you? I don't know. It's hard because like I would have to put on 
a character to to be able to have the energy to do what some of these girls do. And some of them in the group are not that outgoing. Like sure. Mel C, Sporty Spice, yep. and Posh Spice both say that they were a lot more reserved than the other three. I can tell that. I actually could see yeah. that. You can even tell in the movie. Oh, yeah. That they have mm-hmm. more of the lines that they were given rather than like the goofy, like random stuff that you think that they're probably adding. Yeah. I think if you watch an interview with the girls, like they all do a good job of, of chiming in. Like everybody gets to talk. Yep. However, those two tend to be a little bit more like, I'll let the other girls go for it. Mm-hmm. Um, the two biggest personalities in this, can you guess who the two biggest ones are? Sporty. No, so we just said Sporty's a book. Right. Sporty and Posh are the quiet ones. Oh, Sporty and Posh. Sporty. Not scary. No. Oh, I thought it was nope. scary and, and Posh nope. are the quiet ones. Sporty and Posh are the oh, quiet ones. Oh, well. The more reserved Then ones. I'm going to say the other two. Then I'm going to say Baby and Ginger are the two most outgoing. Close. Ginger, yes. Oh. Scary. Scary is one of the most outgoing? You just need to watch an interview, and she is exactly who she is in the movie. Yeah. She's like that, like loud and boisterous and like- She's so hard to understand. <laughs> yeah. She, I have the hardest time understanding her. Oh, go on, yo, no. <laughs> I can't. I got nothing. I don't know. That sounded like a different dialect. I, got I didn't know that one. I can't say. Yeah, we'll have to get a clip of it. Oh, what is this? Oh, come here, girls. Come here, Spice Girls. Come on, my fellow women. Women, let's go. <laughs> that wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's the same with fish. I mean, look at this. You've got the spotty one that's wacky. You've got the fluffy one that's cute. And then you've got this ugly loser one. That reminds me of my ex-boyfriend, Stephen. Ugh. Anywho, so personality-wise, that's kind of our group. So the girls end up living together mm-hmm. for... Real world style. Real world style, kind of. while they're, And they're really bonding, like, really quickly. Mm-hmm. So, um, and while they're doing this, they're kind of nervous because, one, they're getting this music that they don't really like, and they're being told, like, yeah, we're going to... Are gonna... they still touch? No, they, well... I don't know. I don't know when they become officially the Spice Girls. I think it might be a little bit further into the process. Um, But they're being told that they have to dress alike, things like that. And they're just starting to feel like, "Eh, I don't know that we're really into this. And they keep getting nervous because they haven't really signed a contract with Mm -hmm. these people. So at a certain point, they decide to cut and run. They're already a group. They like each other. They're like, hey, we don't have a contract. Let's just get out of it. Let's go make our own music. Uh And so... While this group is kind of manufactured, this is where it kind of like goes off the reins a little bit and like becomes its own thing. Mm -hmm. So the girls put together a showcase. And by that, I mean, this was kind of done for them already. They were going to have a showcase where all of these different record execs were going to come and watch it. That's still set up for them. They cut and run. They're now solo. That's still set up. They create six songs to have at this showcase. Mm -hmm. At the showcase, they're... Future manager is there. Hold on, I got, now I gotta find where I'm at. Oh, this is just throwing me off all of a sudden. <laughs> just have to jump all over the place here. Simon Fuller uh-huh. from Virgin Records is there. He loves the girls. Virgin. Virgin Records. Britney Spears was on Virgin Records. Was she? How yep. do you know that? <laughs> Come on, babe. How do you not know that? <laughs> <laughs> it's on my Britney wall. <laughs> For sure. So, signs the girls. And it starts to kind of take off after Mm -hmm. that. So, oh, a couple of like random things too. So two of the girls lied about their ages on this initial audition because they were looking for ages 18 to 23. Um, The oldest Spice Girl, Jerry, lied about her age. She was 20. Jerry? Jerry is Ginger. Ginger. Jerry, Ginger. Yep. Ja, 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 ja. Um, she was 24, so she was like one year outside of it. She's the oldest one. Get her out of here, nasty old hag. And this is weird. Emma... Baby Spice yep. lied about her age, but she was 20. So she's like smack in the middle of the range, but she lied and said she was 18. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. And when asked about an interview, she's like, a girl can always lie about her age if she wants to, or something like something like some quip like that. <laughs> Have you ever had to lie about your age for anything? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. But it's easier for dudes, I think. I think gals probably have it more they want more mystery around their age whenever they're like performing or being seen as talent sure yeah that makes sense that we say to keep your age off if you're a woman well i think especially for women because we get judged pretty quickly on that and then that puts us into boxes real Mm -hmm. real fast about what we can and can't do um 
So within that, then they kind of become the Spice Girls, officially. And I think it was during some interview where there was a TV or a radio one, one of the the DJs like kind of like went through and kind of like nicknamed them just based off their looks because mm-hmm. they didn't have like the nicknames before, like Posh and Sporty. Oh. So he's like, you're like Posh Spice, you're like Ginger Spice. And it's Scary. stuck. Yeah. She must have been crazy during the interview. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I just feel like that'd be mean. And somewhat racist. <laughs> well, it's possible. And I don't you know. You shall be scary. Spies. I mean, she. I mean, I think she embraces it. Yeah. Like, so I don't think. I don't think she would like have stuck with it if she didn't like it. That's not true. People no, have to do that all true. the time. That's yep. not true. But I. She's never in interviews since ever said anything about it being a uh, a thing that she didn't like. Like you didn't want to be called wet fart, but that's what everybody at Mankato calls you. What? <laughs> yeah, call you wet fart now. <laughs> They call me what? They call you wet fart. When did they start doing that? I don't know. I think it started in the last year or so. <laughs> I can do the words. <laughs> um, so the, they get started writing music. They wrote the song Wannabe. Wannabe mm-hmm. is their first hit. Yep. You, you Are you familiar with this? Yeah. Very good. I don't know. You don't know their names, so I just I need to like walk you through this baby steps. They wrote it in 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The girls said that they were listening to an old shaggy reggae song, and they're like, we have to do something annoying like this song. <laughs> they said we have to do something annoying like that this That is song? my direct quote from wow. Scary Spice herself. <laughs> wow. So they end up creating that song, and this becomes the song is the biggest selling single of any girl group of all time. Still? Yeah. Including like Destiny's Child? Yes. Survivor? Yes. This song, Wannabe? Yeah. Think of it from like a worldwide standpoint. Yeah. Like See, that's they have the part. so much appeal everywhere. It's not just like the US and then like we dabble yep. in the worldwide stuff. They're like at the core over there. Yeah. I mean, that's the key right there is it it's is a worldwide key. phenomena rather mm-hmm. than just a United States phenomenon. Do you remember the music video for Wannabe? Um, rem- just say a little bit about it. Well, it's filmed in one shot. Does that help? Yeah. And there's the camera just like goes on a track yeah. mm-hmm. and it goes up steps and it goes like yep. all around. It follows yep. them. One shot. Yep. It took about 10 takes. Wow. To get it, which isn't bad. Yeah. I mean, for, it's pretty in depth. There's a lot of choreography. Uh-huh. There's a lot of spots to hit. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens and it's things the go wrong. It's 1917 but... of music videos. It. <laughs> movie 1917. <laughs> Oh, that's or Children of Men. You could say Children of Men too. The Sam Mendes of music video directors <laughs> did that one. That's very cool. good. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, so in the song "Wannabe," one of the Spice Girls isn't singing on the record. Oh, oh, like in the recording? Yeah, I was gonna say in the music one video, the, nobody's singing. One right? of the Spice Girls wasn't there when they recorded it. Oh. She had a wedding. And so she doesn't have any solo lines in it. Can you tell me which Spice Girl does oh, not sing in Wannabe? Okay, it's not scary. It's not sporty. Um, yep, those are your two. Your... Yeah, those are easy. It's not yep. Baby. Nope, not Baby. Ba- baby sings in a lot of songs. Yep. I was surprised by how much Baby sings. Like oh, yeah. when we saw the movie. Yeah, Because you're going to see like when everybody sings. Mm-hmm. Posh doesn't sing a lot in a lot of songs. Yeah. So that's my guess. But I think it could be Ginger as well, because I don't remember if Ginger sings. No, I think Ginger does sing in that song. It's Posh. It's Posh. Yep. It's Posh. Who I feel like... A, Posh in general, even though she's the musical theater kid, was like the one that has the least amount of solos in all the different songs that they showed. Yeah, you're 100% right. Yeah, she sings the least mm-hmm. out of all the girls. Um, we'll go on to that either uh, later, later, post uh, P- La- Spice Girls. Later, later. Later, later. Um, but in 2016 interview, she said they used to turn off her mic and just let the others sing. But luckily, because she used to wear heels, she just used to jig about a bit, and she got away with it. But it never came easily. I was, she was always much more reserved than the other girls. So sometimes, so she didn't care that they turned off her mic? Sometimes they would mute her mic. And she was just okay with that? Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't hear okay with that as I read that quote to you. Oh, it that sounds, sounds like, like sounds like she would just get away with like dancing around while they shut off her mic. Like it was like okay, that's fine. Yeah, I think I think she's just putting on a brave face for the interview. What's oh, she okay. gonna say? Like it really hurt my feelings. Yeah, I felt vulnerable, and for sure. even now I feel pretty crappy about it. Yeah, she should say all that. She probably should say that. Um, later, when Jerry leaves the band. Spoiler alert, did you know Ginger Leaves? I did. I don't know what you know. Yeah. <laughs> Ginger Leaves. She ends up singing a lot of Ginger stuff oh, okay. when she's out of it. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So now, believe it or not, we're to Spice World. We're to the movie. The first album has come out. Uh-huh. It's insane. Just the first album? The, just the first album. Did we not hear any album two songs on this soundtrack? 
they wrote the second album while they filmed. During the day, yep. they would film. At night, they would have a little trailer for music, uh-huh. and they recorded and wrote all of album two, which is split throughout the film. Yeah, I was going to say, I heard album two songs. Oh, you did. Because you did. Rach and I, guys, we <laughs> listened to both albums on a recent road trip up to Rach's family's cabin. It was so fun. It was. Album one has like three good songs and otherwise i think it's trash like i think album one is weak sauce we both stopped listening we couldn't remember any first songs two songs after are the great. first three songs and, <laughs> for oh, well yeah three for you two for me and then there was a song later in the album that i was like oh i know this song too that yeah like that's well. true there was a few more but for, for the me, most part was i was three. like "Ooh, i know the second album but, much but better then second album mm-hmm. which i did not know very well at all Second album's good. Mm-hmm. I was surprised. I was like, you know what? This is a strong second showing. <laughs> this is impressive. All right, and I'm going to highlight where we're at because now, guess what? We're going to jump up to the film trivia. Okay. And then we'll come back to where we're sure. at in the yeah, timeline. Yeah, yeah. Does yep. that work for you? That I works get for ahead. me. I don't want to I like... like it. It's like a timeline. It's chronological. It's like, I think it keeps it all in order. Oop. Yes, but the girls said that they were really hyper after a day of like filming, like their energy was Those up. Those girls were really hyper? <laughs> huh. I, that's Can't you see that? No, they're just so <laughs> com- they're so grounded in their work. I can't imagine how exhausting that would be, though, to oh. film all day and then go write music at night and film. And I uh, yeah, just... I'm sure there are a lot of naps. Yes, probably, probably, and yes. Yep. <laughs> all right. Oh, I've got to come to that stuff too. All right. So, believe it or not, this movie took less. It's a sequel. <laughs> it's based on a book. <laughs> May I? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, less than a year from the idea of the film to finish to making the movie. Like, from the inception of the idea to when the movie was filmed and done, it was a year. That's supposed to surprise me? No. I, Did you see I'm being the movie? Fa- I'm being facetious. <laughs> the movie, if they spent more time than a year on it, I am shell No, shocked. filming was only like two months in the summer. So yeah, but got got it all thrown together. I'm surprised they had to do a whole sixty day shoot. I thought it'd be a thirty day. <laughs> yeah, I mean truly, um, the girls weren't allowed to read the script ahead of time, um, for fear that or the script like during the day once they had signed mm-hmm. on to the project, they didn't want them to read like the whole piece because they didn't think they would like it or they thought maybe they would mess with it too much. Um, so the writer only like, gave them like little bits and pieces to read at a mm-hmm. time. Ginger was very involved in it or tried to be very involved in the process. She said that she was spending hours on the phone trying to get things all sorted out and make things sure that the script was right. And by the time we started, she says it was almost perfect. (laughs) Almost perfect is the quote. (laughs) So Ginger was super satisfied with the end result script. Oh, she should be because her hands are all over it. Wow. (laughs) Wow. She's like, yes. I fine-tuned this for hours, you guys. This is the perfect script. <laughs> and best original screenplay goes to Jerry Ginger Spice <laughs> and the writers of Spice World. Very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, during the filming, the girls were only given the script for that day. Mm-hmm. And then they just rehearsed it. And then they just filmed that little spot that they did for the day. So they didn't have to do like the whole, like you didn't rehearse and get off book for it. It was like, here's your stuff for today. Well, there's no character arc. There's no through line. There's no plot. So like (laughs) for them, that really wouldn't have been hard. Sure. It's like, hey, here's your vignette for the day. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of like in vignettes, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Did you have a favorite vignette? Um, I had vignettes that weirded me out more than others. Sure. The alien vignette was really off-putting for me. <laughs> not, not because there were aliens and they looked weird because they had these small little heads, yeah, their heads but were because weird. they were weird, horny-ass men aliens mm. that I thought were really kind of disgusting. Like, mm-hmm. the first thing they do is they try to grab Scary's boob, which mm-hmm. does not age well. It's like, oh, God. <laughs> these aliens that look really weird, and I was like, forget these aliens because <laughs> they're trying to grab Scary's booby. And then one of them has a has one of them sh- uh, sign their belly and all this stuff. I don't know. I was like, what is going on around here? Yeah. This is super weird. You were very perturbed I was. That, for I sure. was. Oh. Oh. Oh, he got off! And now you've done it now! Jerry, go and say something to us. Go and say something! Go and say Good, Jerry. What do you want with us? Yeah, that one did a number on me. So you didn't like that one? No. I didn't like... 
I didn't like any of the story that had to do with the guy who was coming around taking pictures, like when he came out of the toilet and like when he was swimming and stuff. With yeah, him. explain who you're talking about. This is, okay, so the, the newspaper guy hires this photo- photographer who can mm-hmm. like go through space and time in order to grab pictures of people. <laughs> and he was is just like this weird bald-headed guy. And um, like every time he's in the scene or whatever, and he's supposed to be like this conniving guy, and you're supposed mm-hmm. to care about him. I was like, get this guy off the screen. Nobody <laughs> cares about this. Get him out of here. Oh, here's what I'll say. I I'm a little concerned that I think you took this movie much too seriously, and I don't think oh, I that you, you're coming into it with the right lightness and the right airiness that no, is necessary no, 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 no. for this film. No, 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 no. I I mean I tried, I tried. You? Yeah, I did. I wanted to like it. I was excited. <laughs> I was excited. But. All right. Well, wah, wah. You just get to the Utah meter, I guess. You hate it so much. <laughs> Don't care. Coming on. Um, Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Uh, so <laughs> the girls had, shocker, had so many improvisations that the script supervisor almost quit. I believe that. And <laughs> you, you can imagine? tell. You can tell that there are whole scenes where yeah. they're just going off the rails. And sometimes it's kind of charming. But a lot of times, you talk about the Goonies madness. Mm-hmm. I got like times 10. Yeah. Goonies madness exponentially increased. Yes. Where it's yeah. just them talking over each other and, co- and like trying to one-up each other with jokes the whole time. The ad-libs, but then put on these really thick accents from Liverpool and yeah. Leeds. It's just, it's hard. It's hard to hear. I actually heard it better as an adult than I did as a kid. I, as I listened to it, I thought, whoa, I feel, I feel like I finally understood or heard that scene and I had never heard it or understood it before. How many times have you seen this movie? Oh, I've seen it quite a few times. Really? Yeah. Like when like, we were watching it, because you didn't remember. Under 10, rem- over 5. You didn't remember it before, and you're like, I got to watch it, and then I got to work on the format a little bit, because I don't really remember. But when we were watching it, this all came back to you, and you're yeah. like, oh, I've seen this movie many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But can you, I mean, it makes sense, though, why I can't remember, like, what the story's about, right? Because sure. it's not about anything, but I did yeah. remember little vignettes. I just didn't know how they all tied together. It's how I feel about <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's 2. <laughs> I know I've seen it so many times, but I couldn't tell you anything. Or Norm the Gnome, that movie. Norm the Gnome. I, do, I showed you pictures of this movie. <laughs> oh, Norm the Gnome, don't remember anything about it, but I know I watched it a ton. Trolls 2 the same way. There's a lot of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> and then you watch them, you're like, oh, there it is. Drop Dead Fred, there's another one. Yeah. All right, let's get into a little bit of casting, a little bit of cameos. Um, so Richard Grant, who plays the film's band manager. Yep. He did not want to do this film because he thought it would ruin his career. Did it? His nine? No, it didn't. His okay. nine-year-old made him do it. His nine-year-old <laughs> was such a big fan. Guy or gal? I think Does... it was a girl. And she said, Dad, you have to do this because then I can meet them or get something signed. And so he did it for them. And I think, when was it? He said, like, later on. I think he was kind of like embarrassed about doing it or whatever, but then like his girls like had a sleepover later on and they were all like went crazy about it. And even mm-hmm. like this might have been like later on after his like girl was like grown up. Sure. And so like he still had like credibility years later. So he's like, yeah, I don't regret doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anything else that he was in? Um, no. But he's been in, I've seen him in other things. I know he's oh, been okay. in he's I think a pretty serious actor. He's got real wild sideburns in this one. He does have real and wild sideburns. And he does weird orgasmic Acting moments. Oh, do you didn't catch that? Where he's like, yeah! uh, <laughs> like, like <laughs> no, I'm not familiar he, with that technique. <laughs> always seems like he's on the verge of orgasm. <laughs> Gosh, fair enough. Um, Alan Cummings was the other casting. Could note. not believe he was in this movie. He, this is an early Alan Cummings. He had Ginger had seen him play Hamlet a few years earlier. Yeah, and she was like, "Oh yeah, let's get him." So they reached out and got him. <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> hey, I don't know if you have this person written down, but that in the credits, they're talking to this gal. And they're saying, they're talking about like some movie that she did. And they're saying that we need you to lend credibility to our movie. No idea who that is? No, I think it's a Brit thing. Okay, like some famous w- British actress? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. on something like that. Um, cameos, a lot of random cameos in this. Do you have a favorite cameo? Um, Yeah, Roger Moore. Yeah. Roger Moore, I, he's another one I was, uh, but even, but for him, I thought it was more fun. He's probably my favorite part of the whole movie. 
Yeah, explain who Roger Moore is. Okay, this. Roger Moore. Yeah, uh, if you don't and know who Roger Moore, if you is. don't know who Roger Moore is, he is James Bond number three, I think. It goes Sean Connery, then there's a guy who does like one movie, and then it's Roger Moore, and he he did the second most James Bond movies. He is a fantastic James Bond. Sean Connery is number one, but a close second's Roger Moore. I really like him as Bond. He is older now, and he plays the the like record label owner or something who like is in control of their manager. So like the hierarchy is the Spice Girls, the manager who we were just talking about with the crazy sideburns who thought his career was gonna get ruined, and then Roger Moore. Yeah. And he always has. At first, he has the cat, which we just talked about this in Godfather. The he's not a bad guy, but like the leadership always having a cat that mm-hmm. they stroke. But a then it turns. <laughs> then it turns into a. It, at one point, it's a stuffed animal instead of a cat. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> oh, I didn't that. catch it. It wasn't an actual cat. It was a stuffed animal. <laughs> That's so, that was so funny. funny. <laughs> and then another one. It was a pig. Mm-hmm. And he's stroking the pig, pig, and then he's feeding the pig. And when it seems, <laughs> it's really funny. The probably the funniest part of the whole movie, like this through line of what's going on with Roger Moore, mm-hmm. and he always talks in these like riddles. Yes, and they were actually pretty thought provoking. Like there was there was one time where Rach thought I was falling asleep, and I think I was. But um, <laughs> he was talking to the band manager, and he was giving like a a really fancy quote, and I like closed my eyes, and I was just trying to like imagine what he's talking about. I was like, oh, that's really deep. And then Rach goes, don't you dare fall asleep. And I was like, oh shoot. <laughs> I, think I was kind of falling asleep thinking about it. When the rabbit of chaos is pursued by the ferret of disorder through the fields of anarchy, it is time to hang your pants on the hook of darkness. Yep. Whether they're clean or not. <laughs> yeah, I laughed a lot during those. I didn't remember that that character or those riddles at all. As again, as an adult, you just become more sophisticated in yeah, your humor, right? Oh, that's absolutely. much much more funny to me now. <laughs> Um, but Elton John is in yeah, this for like yep. a hot second. Just giving kisses. The bus driver, Ty, who's the bus driver? Meatloaf. Meatloaf. Which is Rach in this. kept going, listen to his voice, listen to his voice. And I was like, oh, I don't know who this guy is. He sounds familiar. And then he says, I can't do that. And I was like, oh, is that Meatloaf? And you're like, it's Meatloaf. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Um, they almost got Tony Blair, the prime minister at the time, to be oh, in it. What? He was going to do. Say Tony Blair. Their uh, scene was going to have a press conference with him announcing his favorite Spice Girl. but Who was he going to say, I wonder? I don't know. Dang it. Who knows? Nobody knows. It's provocative. <laughs> uh, but no, he said no to that. They had also tried to get him into the wannabe video, and he said no to that as well. Oh, so. okay. I think it's just a big old part of Pooper. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we talked about the alien scene, which you dislike. Is, yeah. Did you have a favorite scene? I mean, you kind of talked about it a little bit. You like the Roger Moore stuff. I love all the Roger Moore stuff. Yep. Best okay. parts of the movie. Yep. Um, I. So it's tough because I, although I enjoyed whenever they went into a musical vignette and it was not even a vignette, it was just a musical performance. Yeah. I I en- appreciated and enjoyed those because you got to number one see who sings each part. Yes. That's part of the most fun part is you're like, oh, baby sings that. Oh, mm-hmm. that's Ginger, mm-hmm. and. Uh, so that part was cool, but at the same time, sometimes they got a little old and boring hmm. and stale for me. So it just depended. But mm-hmm. some of the scenes I was like, oh, this is fun. It's like watching a, a snippet of a concert. Mm-hmm. But then other times they dragged on too long. So sometimes I liked them, sometimes I didn't. Yeah. And I couldn't say which ones I did or didn't. I don't know. I remember as a kid, I loved the Spice Bus. I wanted to be on the Spice Bus so bad. It had so many. Each girl has their own section on the bus, yep. and they're all kind of playing to their their characters. So, you know, Posh has a runway on hers, and Sporty's got a bunch of workout equipment, and mm-hmm. Babies is a bunch of inflatable house stuff and, and stuffed animals. And stuff. I loved the inflatables. I had a, yeah. used to have inflatable furniture around this time. Like, I had a, <laughs> a really awesome purple inflatable chair. Did you ever make out with anybody on it? No. Taya was, like, 10. <laughs> Still worth the question. <laughs> did you ever have any inflatable furniture? I never made out with anybody on them. <laughs> did, but did you have inflatable furniture? I had an inflatable bed. No, did you? That you put in the pool. Oh, so a like floaty, just a normal yeah. floaty? Yeah. 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 But that would have worked. That would have worked. You could like have done that. Like if I brought it outside of the pool and I just yeah, laid just on it? Yeah, you put it in your room or something. You just lay on it. No, I didn't have anything cool. inflatable. I didn't have a beanbag chair. I didn't have a water bed. I didn't have anything cool, Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not true. I had a tiger mirror, which you've seen. Oh, yeah. I had a tiger. There are tigers or Siberian. I don't know. Yeah, tigers. 
And Tigers was like mirror. superimposed on this mirror that was in your bedroom and for you could only way see, too long. And you could only see in the mirror, like in the corners. I think it was glued to the wall it for was. the longest you time. You say it was in there for too long. That's the reason. <laughs> because when you took it down, you had to read drywall. My parents were like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, whatever, that's fine. I can have that tiger Ooh. mirror throughout all of high school and undergrad. I think they didn't get rid of it until I was in grad school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a long time. I remember practicing for mass auditions when I was in undergrad, practicing to that corner of the tiger mirror. In the tiger mirror? Wow. Wow. You're right. I had that for a long time. (laughs) I'm just glad that they weren't able to salvage it and it didn't make its way up to us. Because I don't know where tiger mirror would go. (laughs) Probably the basement. (laughs) If there. Oops, we had an accident. Um, I think, yeah, so the bus was one of my favorites. I also really enjoyed the end of it when the directors are pitching the film and they're kind of talking about all this like crazy movie stuff that's Mm -hmm. happening, like this chase scene or this bus driving through London and all this nutty stuff happening. And I love that it's happening in real life to the girls. And it's just like it keeps getting wilder and crazier. There's a bomb on the bus. There's this and this. And they keep asking, why? Why do we do that? He's like, because it's the rules. So. Mm I enjoyed that. They I do, thought it was funny. Well, part that was funny was during that sequence when they talk about this car chase and the bridge is going up and the car has to go over the bridge and you see it, they did it with miniatures and stop motion. That part's pretty funny. And then they're like, it's going to be too expensive. <laughs> it's yeah, funny because, you know, it's just miniatures. And... I also enjoyed, so the girls have a show um, in Milan and they're working with this director in Milan and he has these backup dancers come in and they're all these like beefcake men and they're kind mm-hmm. of essentially in speedos and the girls are like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. we didn't agree to, to doing this and their manager like almost gets into like a fist fight with this guy from Milan mm-hmm. so the compromise and the compromise is is that these male backup dancers come out in these like, purple suits for the performance but they have ashless chaps on on the yep, back <laughs> i remember as a kid i thought that was very funny oh i'm sure you did i'm sure I you really liked it because so you're like hard. i gotta see their pectorals in the first scene and i gotta see their buttocks in the second scene yeah i don't think i think it was just more about it was funny to see butts <laughs> that's where i was at <laughs> all right tell me from an acting standpoint who was the worst in this out of everybody? Yeah. Oh, like the the newspaper guy? He was worse than all the Spice Girls. The the main newspaper guy? The newspaper guy? bad guy. Mm-hmm. But I liked his sidekick. Mm-hmm. So he, the newspaper b- bad guy um, has a sidekick who's just like egging him on all the time. And there's a moment, it's towards the beginning, which is really weird, where he, the newspaper guy is getting, the mogul is getting really mad or really like worked up. And then it starts raining indoors <laughs> and it's raining on his assistant and he's just like, staring at him and they're having this conversation it's so random but i actually liked the assistants acting in that moment i was like oh that's he's doing a pretty good job i thought that was a really funny moment <laughs> i'm so random <laughs> i'm so laughing about it Ooh, was there anybody who surprised you and you thought like actually so-and-so's not bad in this obviously okay you can't say like alan cummings you can't say people that are like yeah because alan cummings wasn't bad no there's he people actually who were good in he this. actually was able to turn make chicken salad out of chicken show um, <laughs> but uh um you know all the spice girls weren't terrible i think they're actually pretty close to who they are to be honest i mean if you watch an interview they're not too far off. Some of them at times were acting and it felt yeah. acting, but sometimes I feel like because it was ad lib so much, it's like that's kind of just them talking. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually really enjoyed Posh. She had yeah. a lot of good comedic pieces, like just, I don't know, sprinkled throughout. Mm-hmm. And, and just as this character that she plays is kind of like cold, uh, non empathetic person. Yeah, for and sure. and yep. I know that that's not her. her at least in real life, that's not who she is. Um, but for this this movie, this character that she played, I just thought I thought it was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. She had me giggling quite a lot. Yeah, I would say that they all were better than I thought they were going to be. There you go. There's something. That all wasn't so hard, cars. was it? No, it wasn't so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we can get into the money and stuff for the movie, or we can jump back into where the Spice Girls are at post movie. Should we continue with the movie stuff? Um, I don't know if we should because I think we're gonna get into talking about like reviews and things like that when we get into the money, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's jump back to their career. We'll come back. All to right. This. So we did this film. Eh, you know, we'll talk about how it was 
was or wasn't received. It's not it's not a big deal. It doesn't crush anything. <laughs> um the girls had their first major concert after this movie was released. They had not uh-huh. have a had a huge live concert until post this movie. What do you mean? Like they had done like shows, like mini shows, yeah. but not like a forty thousand stadium seat show until after the movie was after done. After the movie, was the movie was done so early in their career, they hadn't even released the second album yet because the second album was with the film when it was released. So why would somebody take a chance on making this movie mm-hmm. if they're just they've only done album number one and um, Wannabe is like their big hit? Yeah. And a, it was on top of the charts, granted. It yeah, was, right? Yeah. It was number one, I'm sure, oh, for a while. And, like, several singles on it were also number one. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, but just one album. I, it's You're not wrong. Less than a year, pretty it's much. It's a little crazy. I mean. But you're not wrong. Think about how many albums BSB and NSYNC and all those mm-hmm. guys had to do before, or Britney, before they became huge megastars, mm-hmm. it didn't. It wasn't just one album because that one album could just be a flash in the pan. Yeah. And so the fact that somebody decided like this is this group mm-hmm. is I'm going to invest money in them to make a movie, mm-hmm. a, a musical movie, which typically could be a real miss. Yeah. Like think about. I know people love this movie, but Prince's movie is kind of was kind of a flop at the time. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Maybe it's just not regarded well now. I don't know. There's something where it's the the sentiments changed on that. Okay. Um, that movie is not super great. I mean, Crossroads didn't do very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you whispered? The, Everyone knows that. The Beatles <laughs> movies are like, I think, train wrecks. I don't mm. know if they're, maybe they're well regarded, mm-hmm. but I think they're train wrecks. So I don't know. Like, that's a huge gamble. It is. It really is. I mean, truly, because they didn't create their second album so it was like nine months after the first one which is still pretty crazy to pull out another album that fast in yeah, fact, they year. actually got some slack for doing that because they were just so out there they did that they had so many um brand sponsorships things like that like uh-huh. people were starting to say like this is like too much too fast like these people are like they just felt like they were kind of like money hungry oh, okay um but yeah but think though like how in some ways, I mean, movie aside, it paid off, though, because the second album is fantastic and did yeah. just as well, you know, mm-hmm. or received-wise. It had just as many songs. We love the second album. Yep. So, in some ways, yeah, I guess it paid off, but, like, what a gamble. Uh-huh. What a gamble. Yeah. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, first concert, Istanbul. Whoa! Oh, wow. Yeah. Constantinople. Um, probably. Yeah, it, no, it is. We're not sure, but no, yeah, it probably. Is. They've done, there's, historians have figured out that's the same <laughs> city. <laughs> so, Spice Girls, I don't know, I won't get into this next part yet. Um, shortly after this, at the height of their popularity during their world tour, uh-huh. they ended up firing their manager, Simon Fuller, and then they were self-managed for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, they kind of had the power to be able to do that since they had kind of like hired him on to to be theirs. It wasn't, you know. Yeah, he didn't have them under contract. Yeah, it was different. It's not like Tom Hanks and doing that thing you do, you know. (laughs) The girls were only together for 23 months as a band. That's how I remember it. Right after like the height of this, the movie, the second album, the world tour. Ginger's naked photos. Yes. All that. That was actually early on. I think that was like um, with the first album that that had come out. So the girls were concerned about that because, you know, a lot of their um, people, their patrons who were buying records were kids Mm -hmm. and they were worried about that. But it was also like, you know what, that happened in the past. We're not saying we're role models. We're not saying we're perfect. In fact, if anything, we're more about like, Let's not be ashamed of who we are. If I want to be sexy, I'm sexy. I'm going to own it. Yeah, girl power. So, yeah, screw you, whoever leaked those photos. (laughs) So, um, yeah, so Jerry actually left the band a few months after the movie was released in Uh 1998. Um, So she said due to differences between the girls, Jerry also said that she was the oldest out of the girls and she felt that she could get kind of bossy. Um, And I think that kind of came across, too, with the other girls, although they... Still, like, they said that they're like sisters. Like, they fight and they love each other like sisters, still to this mm-hmm. day. Um, so they got off a plane in Norway for an interview. And as they were getting off the plane, Jerry says to the girls, okay, I'm going to say bye, girls. And they thought, like, well, that's really weird. We go everywhere together. What are you talking about? Um, and they weren't really sure what to, like, really make of that. Like, what do you mean you're going? Where are you going? Mm-hmm. Um, so they do this interview and they just say, they lie and say she's sick because they're like, I don't, maybe she'll just, she's just, like, having an off day. Maybe she just needed to go for a little bit. Um 
I know. And then they, they called and talked to her and she says, no, I'm, I'm done. She's quitting. Um, she talked later in an interview. She just felt like it had gotten so big mm-hmm. at that point. And she herself felt pretty redundant and kind of just unnecessary at that point. Um, and so, so an example that she gives is she wanted to do um, this interview for this breast cancer charity. And um, she wanted to just go do it solo because it was yeah. really important to her. But like with the band's conflicts and things like that, and the band like thinking like, no, we should do that together, but mm-hmm. we don't have time, so you can't do it. Like that was like, she said that for her, it was kind of like the final straw. She's like, okay, I don't like where this is anymore. Like this isn't fun. Mm-hmm. This isn't like, I'm exhausted. I just need to take a step back. So she quit. Yeah. She quit. Um, so the remaining four continue as a band for a little bit, and they go on to record the album, their third album, called Forever. Okay. Um, and then in 2000, they went on hiatus, indefinite hiatus, uh-huh. um, because all of them at the time were working on solo careers. Every single one of them. All four. Every single one of them. Posh, inc- too. Including Jerry. Jerry also goes on to do solo stuff. Oh, okay. Inclu- yeah, Posh also has a so- some solo albums as well. The Cabaret uh, Review. <laughs> <laughs> Mine air. <laughs> um, they are the best-selling girl group of all time. Yeah, that's what you said. Even more than Destiny's Child. That I said that for the single. For oh, Wannabe. Wannabe oh, yeah, is the best-selling like, single. Yeah. But as a group, they are also the best-selling group collectively of all time with 90 million records. Number two? Destiny's Child. The Andrews Sisters. Oh, okay. <laughs> Number three? Destiny's Child. 2NE1, a South Korea oh, group. Oh, yeah. What the heck is going on around here? Number four and five? Destiny's Child. Don't know. TLC. Oh, wait. No, number... I, I wrote this wrong. I wrote TLD. TLC is number four. Okay. No. Yep, number four. Uh, number five is AKB48, a Japan group. <laughs> and number six is Ty... Destiny's, Destiny's Child. Destiny's Child with 60 what? million. <laughs> Destiny's Child's that low? Yeah, I was surprised by that, too. I thought for sure they would have been or or over them, but I think we're... I think we're mixing up a little bit of Beyonce with no. Destiny's Child. No, we're not, because I don't think loved so? Destiny's Child. I know. And I thought they had more longevity than TLC. They, I mean, they did. They were around for longer. Yeah. So in that sense, you're not wrong. But I think mean, about it from a world standpoint and selling records and waterfalls, to the baby. world. Waterfalls, <laughs> baby. Waterfalls was such a good song. <laughs> for TLC. Honestly, it was so good. It was so good. You're not wrong. Oh, you're not wrong. Oof. Um, let's see here. So Spice Girls, um, 1996 was the first, or Spice was the first album name. Mm -hmm. Um, Spice World, 1997, only nine months later, and then Forever 2000, that album has no ginger on it. Has no what? No ginger is on. Oh, no ginger. Is on that album. So our girls are not then reunited, because you know they reunite, right? Is that a spoiler for you? Uh, kind of, yeah. Oh, all right. Surprise! <laughs> we get back together. All of them? Yes. In 2007, all of the Spice Girls we get back together. We were sophomores in college. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And their tour is called Return of the Spice Girls. Ty, how fast did the tickets sell out for the first date of Return of the Spice Girls? 12 minutes. Less. Three minutes. Less. Fifteen seconds. A little more. <laughs> Forty-five seconds. Thirty-eight seconds. Wow. Thirty-eight seconds they sold out for the first date. Initial dates were added. Every time an additional date was added, one minute they sold out. Yeah? Yeah. The girls were each paid $20 million each to Ooh, do the nutty. second tour to come together. They also... Did a little promo of it on the Victoria's Secret fashion show that year. They had like two songs that they performed. So all new songs or old songs? Old songs. Oh, okay. So then they so they do this tour and then they go back because they're all being moms and doing like their own stuff right now. Ew, they're, they're all moms now. Yeah, I know they're gross. gross. <laughs> um, and then in 2012, they all get together again uh-huh. for a one show. It's the Summer Olympics. They come out and do a little ha ha surprise it's us they didn't advertise it beforehand it was a surprise i have no idea that's a great oh, question okay. i didn't google 2012 summer olympics to get the deets on that oh gotcha but, okay but if you yeah viewers are welcome to they feel so inclined <laughs> <laughs> so they come out of the woodworks for that 
They go back again, doing their own things, you know, living their best life, judging the X Factor or Dancing with the Stars or whatever. Is that what they did? They all do different things. I'll get into it. Um, And then in 2019, they go on tour again. And this tour is called Spice World. I saw some clips from that one. When I was trying to find the movie on YouTube, Mm -hmm. the Spice World documentary or whatever is on there. And so it's a Spice World. Mm -hmm. And it's from 2019 or whatever. And I'm like, that's not the movie. Yeah. It's just a concert. The only bummer about that is we are missing one of the Spice Girls because she had previous engagements. Do you know which one we're missing? Uh, Ginger? Nope. Posh. Posh. We're missing Posh. She, she had her some previous ex- engagements are she has to <laughs> she has to moisturize David Beckham's abs. <laughs> so she was busy that she time. She was very busy that year. Um actually was running her fashion label, but yes, we can bring in Bex into it as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then so in twenty twenty one which is now, yep. there is talks. So they're trying to get the whole group together to do something for the twenty fifth anniversary. Can I tell you something now that like i i know that this isn't true now that i'm a little embarrassed by please i thought that ginger died (laughs) (laughs) and it made me feel bad about a couple of my thoughts about the group and stuff because i thought they had lost a member but they didn't now that i'm learning this I thought she died early in the 2000s. What? <laughs> I thought they, I knew she dropped out of the band. I knew, uh, yeah. I knew they did the movie. They did the two albums. I, I had knew that she dropped out of the group. Uh-huh. Um, and then I thought she died shortly after that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you, Wow. But it's good to know she's not dead. No, she's not that, dead. <laughs> I feel like when I go to bed tonight, I'll go to bed a little bit more chipper. Because I know that she's tucked away in her bed and she's safe. I can't believe that. That's incredible. It feels like, um, you know, when uh, the Mandela effect where everybody thought Nelson Mandela had died, but he, he hadn't died yet. and then Or everybody thought there was like a date that he died. And he, has, he is dead now, I think. Is that the Mandela effect? Yeah, is where you think something happened as a collective. Oh, yes. As a group. I hear what you're saying. Um, Luke, I am your father. And that's not what Vader says. He says something else. Yes. Um, It's like, Luke, don't you know I'm your father? It's like something completely different. It's something different. weird. You're like, that's not the quote, but it is. Yeah. Yes. And so the mm-hmm. Mandela effect where a collective body of humans all think something happened Uh one way but it didn't yeah i thought maybe like i tried to justify it while you were just talking i was like maybe this is a mandela effect i was like no i think you're the only (laughs) one who thought ginger was dead i think so i'm a little nervous to like compare it to other girl groups where members have died i don't want that to wait they've died other who who has died well we just talked about another girl tlc i know okay okay good phew i didn't want to have to like tell you about that one (laughs) On, on air, air. <laughs> I love waterfalls. I know you. you I'm not ready for this. It. You just love waterfalls so much. You were just talking about. Who it. died next, Michelle oh. and Desi's child? Who is it? Oh, your favorite. <laughs> hey, can we just for like a hot tangent talk yeah. about who is Ty's hottest? You don't want to save child? this for that one Beyonce movie that we watched. Um, the <laughs> one where it's like Fatal Attraction, only it's her. <laughs> I, can't remember what it's I don't called. remember what it's called either. <laughs> Um, you know, we don't want to do that movie for the podcast. I just need to know now because that was good content. No, to say. it was so special. I don't want to. Yeah, it was okay. just so enjoyable okay. when we did it. So yeah, my Destiny's Child ranking befuddles a lot of people, um, because I think Michelle is the hottest. <laughs> And there was a point in time, and there was a point in time, and I am so sorry to say this now because I think that now I see it. Now I'm like, okay, my eyes are open. I see it. But I want to get into this with the Spice Girls as well mm-hmm. because my I have changed. You've so changed. I used to think the ranking went like this. Michelle, Kelly, Beyonce. Oh, my God. We are going to get – can you correct yourself quickly before well, we get a death Well, now threat? I think it's – Beyonce, Michelle, who are very close in my book. No. Even now. Yep. They no. Are. Yeah, they are. They, we've been through this. We've I, already argued Not this. on air we haven't. <laughs> yeah, <with laughs> not our, in with front our of friends, viewers. Christoph and Keeter, we had this whole thing. <laughs> it goes Beyonce, Michelle, very close, but I'll give it to Yance, and then Kelly's third. Yeah. But there was a point in time where Beyonce was last. <laughs> Crazy. All right. I just wanted all of our listeners to listen to that, so- 
I don't know why. It doesn't. It's not good for us. It's really yeah. we're gonna drop we just, ratings. We now. lost viewership. Oh, I just thought the people should know. The people should know. <laughs> <laughs> um, the people should also know the Spice Girls never won a Grammy, which is not that crazy because That's they were only crazy. together for like two years, and because their music isn't like oh, it's like Grammy worthy. I, I don't know. Maybe best new artist. I was just gonna say they could have won best one. new artist, but mm-hmm. I don't think they were ever gonna win best album. Their album doesn't have enough hits. I think Spice, the Spice the World. One? I think the Spice World does. Maybe, but, but when is this? It, That's 2000? Who knows? Do you think no, it's better it than... No, it was 98. Oh, it was 98. Oh, dang. If it was 2000, it was good. Do you think it's better than BSB's Millennium? Do you think it's better than <laughs> Oops, I Did It Again album? Do you really think that, Rach? Do you really want to You really want to go down this road right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't. Not really. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do a little. Where are the girls now? I mean, yes. they, so so they never won Grammys, but they did win Brit Awards, American Music Awards, MTV VMAs, all those things. They, they're the, they're plenty taken care of. Very important awards. Well, they're also the best-selling hey, girl group of all time. Speaking of awards, can I have a moment to glow about the Golden Freaking Globes right now? Boom! Golden Globes, you suck. <laughs> NBC yours. dropped you. I've been saying it for years. You suck. You suck. You suck. Okay, go ahead, Rage. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Um, which of the girls do you want to uh, learn about where they are now? Um, I want to hear about Ginger because I feel so much better. She's not dead. So let's talk <laughs> she's about where she's She's not dead. At. She's very much alive. Good. She created several solo albums oh, um, in 1999, 2001, in 2005. Um, in the good. Um, there was a single called Look At Me that premiered at number four in the Look UK. Look at me. She had a couple of hits, but they were all like mostly like UK hits. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gross. Oh, well. UK hits. Yeah. She was a judge on the X Factor for the UK, judge on Australia's Got Talent. Um, she wrote a children's book called Eugenia Lavender, which is fairly popular. She became a best-selling author. Mm-hmm. Um, the book is actually, the character Eugenia is based on her, and then she has like fun characters in it who are also loosely based on people that she knows, and okay. some of the Spice Girls as well. Um, she's a lot of philanthropy. Yeah. Um, she's a goodwill ambassador for the UN, and like some of her favorite charities are things to do with breast cancer, AIDS, violence against women in education. Mm-hmm. Um, a bit of a controversy. She said she's not a feminist. Why is that a controversy? Well, because girl power and feminism should essentially be the same. I don't know. Maybe she defines feminism differently. She Maybe definitely does. Maybe she sees does. it as something that's more negative and she thinks about it, girl power is more positive. Yeah. Let me give you a quote here. She yeah. says, for me, feminism is bra-burning lesbianism. It's very <laughs> unglamorous. We need to see a celebration of our femininity and softness. Sure. It's interesting. I don't think it's like a super, I mean, granted, straight white male here, but um, I don't think that she seems like she's like against the cause. No, I think she just doesn't understand the definition of feminism. I think that maybe feminism is too broad in the sense that it's taken on some of the really radical ideas that she doesn't agree with. Hopefully it's been, since then, it's been redefined and we can all just agree that feminism is equalism. And I think she figures, I hope she figures that out. Sure. Sure, sure. <laughs> Another controversy. Yeah. She loved Margaret Thatcher. Oh, okay. Yep. She was quoted as saying, Margaret Thatcher, I mean, girl power, whatnot, but uh, Margaret Thatcher is one of like the original Spice Girls. <laughs> Probably <that> she did. <laughs> cool. She was very much was part of Was she a the... good singer dancer? Truth, <laughs> I don't know. Um, she was very much like a, a part of the conservative party, and then it wasn't until... Like halfway through Tony Blair's um, prime ministership, mm-hmm. I was going to say presidency, but we don't call it that, prime ministry, mm-hmm. that uh, she switched to the Labor Party eventually. Oh, okay. So well, that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who should we talk about next? Um, Let's talk about Scary. What's Scary up to? Scare Bear. All right. She also had a UK number one single. The song was called I Want You Back. Ty, how does that song go? Ah. Want you back. Uh oh. Sounds too Baby, similar. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> sounds super similar. Oh, you think she got in trouble for that? I wonder. It's number I don't one so. for a while. That's good. <laughs> um, she got second place on Dancing with the Stars. Oh, really? So that's fun. Cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. She lost to Julianne Huff and her partner. Oh, Julianne Huff. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, she was a contestant on The Masked Singer. Oh, gross. I believe she was yeah. the seahorse. Oh, my gosh. I don't <laughs> even care. Yeah. Well, it, sa- it says that she got 11th place. I don't know that. On means. The Masked Singer? Yeah. I don't know who they have on it. Who but cares? I don't think she's a bad singer. I like. No, I, I don't think either. She's a good singer. I don't either. But like, if it's the mass singer, like, you I'm know, I know. This whole section is. I know you don't care, but this is where they are. <laughs> Do you want to know where they is are? Is that or the not? section's title? <laughs> I know you don't care, but here's where they are. Yes, <laughs> that's what this section is called. <laughs> uh, she's been a judge on America's Got Talent, where she currently is. Um, she starred as Roxy on Broadway. Um, she has a child with a famous comedian, a famous black comedian. Can you guess? Chris Tucker. Nope, but very close. Really? Very Chris Rock? Th- nope. Close, very close still. Uh, Who's the third one? Kevin Hart. <laughs> I went to I mean, yeah, he's more contemporary. Eddie Murphy. Oh, Eddie Murphy. Older. Who seems very old Yeah. For well, I mean, maybe not, but like Eddie Murphy, just older comedian than I was thinking. I was thinking yes. like a comedian and yeah. it was really popular in the late sure, 90s. Sure, sure. Dave Chappelle, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dave Chappelle would make a good guess. Nope, wrong again. Still Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Wait, let me keep going. I might get somebody else. Um, this is just a random <laughs> tidbit fact because I had nowhere else to put this. Um, Mel B, scary, yeah. is actually bisexual, and she said in an interview that she and Jerry, Ginger Spice, yep. had sex. Oh, During what? the height of Spice Girls. Oh, my gosh. Folks, only here can you get that kind of crafty reporting. <laughs> Tabloids. Yeah. It was a call Ginger from and something. Scary had sex? That's what she said in an interview. That is She said that they giggle about blowing. it now and it's kind of it just like kind of happened, but Remember like that time? Yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting cuz personality-wise they're both so loud and like out there. Exactly. You think so? Yeah, I mean, I guess for so, a hookup, right? not for a relationship. Yeah, that's true. They're so loud. That's like, okay. hey, what would happen if we kissed right now? <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. So there you go. Check. What do you mean, check? I mean, check. My bishop's got your king. Where? There. You either got to move it in front or move it out the way. All right, well, I'll move that fair grand horse to there. Sort that out. You can't do that. Says who? Says Mr. Chess. It's been in the rules for thousands of years. Well, I'm going to break the rules and set this fairground horse free amongst all these little square fields like that. Yeah. I'm going to slap you in a minute. All right, who's next on our list? Um, let's go to Baby. Baby or Emma Bunton. She kept all of the shoes and dresses okay. from when she was a Spice Girl. So she's all that fun. Those shoes, man, so tall. You would roll an ankle so fast. I used oh, to have yeah. platform shoes, but like they weren't as tall as theirs were, but they were like, I don't know, like maybe like two or three inches. I bet that was really exciting for you. It made you five five. Well, this is the thing. Like I was, this was like in middle school, and I was already five five. Like I was, I looked normal height. I was like a normal person. Yeah. In middle school. Well, for girl height. And, and then, then I just stopped, stopped and then I just didn't grow that, anymore. You know that happened to me too. I was like almost this height when I was like in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of like a lurch. I, I was like the third tallest <laughs> oh. guy in in seventh grade and then like probably like top five in eighth grade. And then everybody just shot up over me and I just stayed at that like six foot range. Mm-hmm. Well, I used to be six one until I started shrinking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a story for another day. Yeah. I mean, but girls are already a little bit like taller, if not eye to eye with boys in middle school. So yeah. yeah, the shoes at that point it wasn't really about being tall, but they were they were cool and I should bring them back. <laughs> I think they are kind of back to be honest. I feel like I see people wear like really big chunky tennies again. Girls will yeah, for sure. And guys. I yeah? see guys wearing tennies, like yeah. sneakers, yeah. that have a thick heel yeah. that boost them up about an inch. Don't they almost look That's like orthopedic thing. shoes? Kind of, yeah. yeah. I don't do. know if I can get on board and with that. And they it's do not dorky. have flat feet like I do. They're not doing it because they need it. They're doing it to boost <laughs> them up another inch. Oh, you're yeah. poor. You're poor arches. That's a, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, fun fact about Baby, yeah. she's trained in karate. Her oh. mom is an instructor. Do you think... She could outduel me in my yellow belt? Um, yeah, for sure. I just saw thousand percent. I just saw a video, I'll have you know. <laughs> of oh, this is for your talent show. There's a girl who is like an orange belt, right? Yeah. 
And she took three tries to break that wood. I want you to know something. <laughs> when I trained out of white and got my yellow, I broke that wood. Same exact move as her. Actually, I think I did with my legs, which is harder. One hit. The fact that Ty is living out is this orange belt that he's referring to was in kindergarten. <laughs> oh, she was in kindergarten? She's a kindergarten. No, I think she was a second grader. No, absolutely not. <laughs> she looked like she might have been second, third. Nope. At least second. She's definitely six years old. No. Okay, six years old, that's first grade. So get your, well, fa- get your year, fact straight, tabloid year. reporter. <laughs> you find out that Ginger and Scary had sex, but you can't figure out how old this third grader is. <laughs> All right, back to baby. So yeah, she also totally. had a number one single in the UK uh-huh. called "You Took So Long." Or no, what took you so long? <laughs> you took you took so, so long. long. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Ty, how does "What Took You So Long" go? How does that go? What took you so long? I gave you my love, and you took my heart. What took you so long? Wow. It's a ballad. <laughs> it's a bit of a slow jam. Yep. <laughs> she also did some voiceover work in an animated movie, Smallfoot. I asked you about this earlier tonight yeah. to see if you had seen that. Had you seen Smallfoot? Smallfoot's really fun. Smallfoot <laughs> is, if you, I, I was telling Rach, it's, if you've seen Baby's Day Out, <laughs> which is where a baby like goes around with all their favorite places. It's the same exact storyline, only it's a Bigfoot's child. Mm. So it's a Yeti mm-hmm. who goes around all his favorite spots, goes to the zoo, goes Cute. to the b- new building construction, does all that stuff. Have you ever seen Baby's Day Out? Yes, more or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So that this movie, Smallfoot has like Channing Tatum in it, mm-hmm. Danny DeVito, yep. LeBron James. Yep. Those are all people who absolutely are also voice actors in that. Yeah. And I then, don't remember who plays the Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> and then lastly, she was also a radio talk show host for a while. I got a couple of awards for that for oh. being for being good at that. So, and then there's also like random hostings there. Like I think she was also like guest spotted on the X Factor, America's Got Talent. You know, in different countries. It's like everybody always does that. Whatever. Whatever. All right. Last but not least. <laughs> no, we've got two more. Sporty and, and posh. posh. Oh yeah. Posh. Let's do posh next. Posh. Victoria Beckham. Um, she had two top ten UK singles. Um, she's also a fashion icon. You gotta wash them line. abs. You gotta wash them washboard abs. <laughs> wash them abs. Wash Beckham's abs. Beckham, Beckham. <laughs> Beckham, Beckham. <laughs> Ooh, well, uh, yeah. On top of those amazing singles that she did, she yep. also did some TV cameos mm-hmm. on Next Top Model, Project Runway, American Idol, blah, blah, blah. Get a load of these documentaries slash reality TV show titles that she has been a part of since leaving the Spice Girls. Okay. All right. The titles are Victoria's Secrets. Okay. Being Victoria Beckham. Uh-huh. The Real Beckhams. Yep. Victoria Beckham, A Mile in Their Shoes. Victoria Beckham, Coming to America. Those are all documentaries that she has had or reality shows. And I think we don't fully understand the height of the popularity of David Beckham when he was the top star in Europe. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. he was, um, uh, oh gosh, I was going to say Ronaldo, who's not the most famous guy anymore. What's his name from Argentina? Shoot. Nope, you're going to look like me. a fool. Yep, but anyways. Posh and Becks, baby. It's um, all about Posh and Becks. But everybody was all about David Beckham. He mm-hmm. was like one of the best soccer players of his era. Mm-hmm. And then he came over to the United States on the like highest paid soccer contract of all time, one of the highest paid sporting contracts of all time, made boatloads of money playing for the LA Galaxy. They didn't win shit, but he still won so much money. Mm-hmm. And he just was this huge icon globally in yeah. the soccer world, which is a global phenomenon. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, just watching the Spice girl who he's married to like a documentary about a spice girl and one of the world's most recognizable athletes fascinating yeah for sure and now that they both don't do either of those things like they're still just like fascinating as a couple like because they're just they're very like well, he's a calvin there. klein model yeah they both Underwear do model. clothing and modeling and 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 such and influencing all that good stuff how so. would you feel if I was a Calvin Klein model like David Beckham who's in like so many magazines and like whenever you went to the newsstand, if you like flipped open a page, there I am just butt naked except for I'm in this really tight underwear, which you can see everything (laughs) all the time. Like it's just everywhere. You look at the street and there's like a big billboard and it's me in my underwear. 
And I'm like, eh, making making this face. <laughs> you can tell what face it is by the noise. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'm into it. I you like would? It. Yeah, for sure. You're going to be like, gosh, everybody sees my husband in his underwear all the time. Uh, I mean, there's a little embarrassment with that, but not much. Not as much as there should be. Oh, okay. I'm into it. Good to know. Yeah, go for it. Okay. I'm up for it. <laughs> wow, cool girl. I'm a cool girl. <laughs> I'm, nothing really bothers me much. I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty cool. <laughs> it's always the same. I never know what to wear. Yeah, it must be really hard for you, Victoria. You know, try and decide whether to wear the little Gucci dress, the little Gucci dress, or the little Gucci dress. Exactly. I know. Why don't you wear the little Gucci dress? That's a good idea. Thanks, Em. Um, last little fun fact about Victoria Beckham. Mm -hmm. She, well, it's not a fun fact, but she has had a lot of kidnapping and death threats. Even like at the height of their popularity, there was one concert and it was the British Music Awards, I believe. Okay. Um, But she had, yeah, this was after (laughs) the beat, the (laughs) beat. Bowel Movement Awards. (laughs) Um, a red, they, this is, she had been getting a lot of threats and, they saw a red laser dot was on her chest oh, during wow. the concert. And well, they freaked out and they rushed her off. And laser pointers were all the rage at that point, <laughs> so They were, have, late 90s. It could have been a harmless laser pointer. But here's the other thing. There was a back door that was, like, propped open. Yeah. And so there's a – and this like, people had made assassination attempts and threats. Why did they want to kill her? I get the kidnapping because she's so hot and she's <laughs> Beckham's wife. Like, <laughs> that kidnap make, That makes sense to you? Yeah. Kidnap yeah. her. But and kidnap maybe you get her. a ransom. Maybe you hang out with a hot, hot babe for a while. But, like, why? assassinate her I don't know what is she is assassinating her what does that accomplish for you I don't know I, you, I don't have an answer for you huh. are you looking for an answer no did you ever have a laser pointer did you ever get in trouble for a laser pointer no but I remember when kids got in trouble for laser yeah. pointers yeah a lot of kids in my class had them and they got in trouble I never had one either yeah I remember I, oh, story time. Here we go. I Dan was just... over at a friend's house, and I was having a sleepover. It was one of my first sleepovers with more than just Mike and Jeff. Mm-hmm. And I don't even think they were with me. I think I was with a whole new group. Mm-hmm. And we were over at a friend's house. We were in Dakota City. So we weren't in South Sioux. We were in our sister town. And my friends had a laser pointer. And they're these twins. I won't say their names. Actually, they're triplets because they had a sister. <laughs> and he, they were they were playing with this laser pointer, and they were shooting it through their window into their neighbor's house. <gasps> and Ugh. their neighbor had the door open or their window open, and the neighbor like saw this laser pointer or whatever, and they just kept like messing around with this laser pointer, like freaking out this neighbor who was like, "What is going on here?" Yeah. And then finally, the neighbor figured it out and noticed the kids, and he closed the curtain and called the house. Oh, for sure. And then the mo- the parents came down and like yelled at their kids or whatever, and we just were like, "We're just t- still hanging out here." But yeah. So that's my laser pointer story. <laughs> <laughs> what a good story. Yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> spooky. <laughs> it's very spooky. Yeah, I had I not known what those were, I would have also been mystified and upset. Well, I'd be furious. Mm-hmm. As the neighbor, I'd be like, what the hell is this kid doing? Like, mm-hmm. that's an infringement of my privacy. Yeah, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> All right, last but not least. Sporty. Sporty. Melcy or Mel Chisholm. Milk. Milk. Um, she says that during the time of being a Spice Girl that she was actually bullied a little bit. Really? By, she says one girl probably in particular. I think it was Mel B. One of the Spice Girls? Yeah. Oh, yeah. not like bullied from fans or anything like, well, oh, sporty, I think suck. there was some of that stuff too. Like she talks about weight Um, at one point, like later weight? on. She's I, so skinny. Yeah, she actually has an eating disorder I and depression. That. Um, also, uh, uh, Jerry Ginger also had an eating disorder later on too. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but she says that she's not going to name names, but yes, she, it has been addressed and they are aware of what they said. They apologized. Now I'm older and I'm a lot more confident and I will not be shat upon. We don't know who did it. You said we you don't think know. It's she B? says she doesn't name names, but then in the hour documentary that I watched yep. today. Yeah. Tell me the guff. Throughout the... my day scoops <laughs> uh it sounded like it was her and mel b 
kind yeah, of like she, she talked about Mel B kind of like razzed her a lot. Yeah. So and I could see that. Like I think all of the girls like at times like said that they got on each other's nerves and mm-hmm. I mean you're around each other all the time. So yeah. So that was the case. Um she has a tattoo on her arm and it's two Japanese symbols and it means woman's strength mm-hmm. or Girl power. Girl power. Yeah. Yes. Did they say how they came up with the girl power thing? Um. What do you mean? Like, like did it? Was it a phrase that somebody gave them, or did they come up with it? Did they just say like, "Hey, let's be this like feminist power group. Mm-hmm. Like, we let's girl power be our motto." That's a great question. I don't know where that motto came from, but I just know that the the themes that the girls mantra, wanted right? to, yeah, the mantra that they wanted, that was all a part of why they kind of broke off from the group before because they wanted to to be their own thing. They wanted to be in charge of their messaging. Mm-hmm. Um, they wanted to be, yeah not puppets Mm -hmm. they wanted to be empowering to to women like they talked about like if you want to wear a short skirt and a wonder bra then you should be able to you should own that and that's great you can be sexy and it's cool like it's not for men it can be for you like um and they another things that they talked about in like early interviews like they were really about promoting safe sex and things like that so just Mm -hmm. talking about things that um, women typically weren't talking a lot about that. It was a kind of taboo to sure. like own that sexuality piece. Yeah. So they were really trying to push that into the forefront. Um, so yeah, yeah, girl power. I don't know where that phrase came from, but it's pretty great. Cool. Pretty great. Do you want to get a tattoo on you? No, definitely not. But what if it's not in like English? What if it's in a different language and nope. it looks cool? No, girl I want to get. I want to get some really dorky tattoos. Triforce, <laughs> the One Ring, yeah. um, Full Metal Alchemist symbol. Yeah, I've got a lot of things that I want to be on there. Yeah, be real dork. Uh, Mel C has the best solo album, selling wise, out of all the girls. Okay. Um, she actually has quite a few albums that she went on to do. She has her own recording label uh-huh. now, um, and she also has the most singles as a female artist in the UK. The most number one singles of all wow. history. So yeah. she like continued to be a big deal. We just never heard about her over here. Yeah, I would say so. I like just mm-hmm. I think she just churned out so so much and did a lot of like duets and things like that. But yeah, never um, really cracked the the U.S. charts mm-hmm. really. Um, and also a judge on Asia's um, Asia Got Talent. Gosh, <laughs> they all did those. They basically yeah. all took a country, split up, and just I'm so did sick it. of those music shows. So like, <laughs> it's like, oh, gosh, I know, burn them all down. So yeah. That is Where Are They Now? Ty. Yeah. It's time to talk about... Reception of the movie? Um, Before that, should yeah. we talk about the Spice Girls just in general, the ladies, and who you think maybe is the best singer? Okay. Um, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite Spice Girl? We haven't talked about that. Hmm. This is tough because from a talent standpoint, I mean, when I was... Okay. Yes. Things have changed. Talk, walk us through I'll the say. journey. Take us on the journey. Okay. I actually wrote this down because I wanted to make sure I got this straight. <laughs> so from a talent perspective, mm-hmm. I used to think that Scary and Sporty were the two best singers because they're the loudest when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I I mean, I still think that they're both actually fairly good vocalists. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually appreciate Baby's voice more than I used to. Mm-hmm. I think Baby's got like a nice, sweet voice. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, that's she's got. She's pretty talented. Yeah. Um, I think Posh and Ginger are the weakest too, from a singing perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, probably goes Posh then Ginger as far as Posh Ginger, and then maybe Scary, and then Baby and Sporty are close to the top for mm-hmm. me uh, as far as talent. Mm-hmm. So let me talk about looks perspective. And oh, are we I, getting into that? Well, do you want to save it? No, I am just. Are we going to rank these women based on their looks? Because I, that's what matters. Or I want to play a game. Is? I want to play a game called Rach. What do you think that how I rank them in order of hotness from an attraction standpoint? Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Can you blow on the mic one more time? What do you think? Okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Um. Now or then. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think. Don't look down at. I'm not looking down. I think to... I look left when I'm thinking. I talked about this. In the oh last yeah, that's episode. right. This is look. like my thinking brain. This just tells you that hey, I'm being creative. Just spit it out. Follow your impulse. Ah, it's so hard. Okay, I'll start with. I think least um, attractive to you, even though. 
she well i was gonna say she has a great bod but i always feel weird complimenting people when they have great bods when you know it was the result of a eating disorder and working out in the gym for sure. three hours a day but you can just sporty. talk about overall beauty you don't have to I would get say too specific sporty and then next would be um i'll say scary yeah and then next i would say it's getting a little tricky to be honest um I'm going to go ginger, posh. No, I'm going to go posh, ginger, baby. So you think that that's my ranking? The yeah. baby is the top? Yeah. Okay. Because you like blondes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's my old ranking. When you were a kid, it was Jerry because you thought she was the hottest because she had ginger. the biggest cheat cheese. <laughs> Okay, you are not incorrect. Um, in my old ranking, here's what it used to be. Yeah, okay. Sporty was last, yep. then it was scary, then it was baby, mm-hmm. and then it was posh, and then it was ginger. Ginger was the hottest to me when I was younger. You're mm-hmm. right, because I probably it was all about the chi Yep. So now the new hotness ranking. Yeah, ready. Baby's last. Oh. Take that, blondes. I didn't even think about that. Now I really want you to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Baby's last. Okay. Then ginger. Oh, interesting. And then sporty. Uh huh. And then scary. Uh huh. And then posh. Posh wow. is easily number one. Yeah. But that I that's my new order. I was I remembered that's so not being different. as attracted to sporty mm-hmm. and much more attracted to ginger. Mm-hmm. Those two are the like the most like stark ones for me. That was sure. like, oh. Mm-hmm. Sporty's biggest thing for me was always the cap tooth. Like she's got that silver tooth. Yeah. That always kind of like threw me off like, eh, I'm just... She kind of has this cool Amy Winehouse thing going though. It's kind of cool. What, Amy, did Amy Winehouse have a cap tooth? No, like just like a look. Like, oh. you know, like she's cool. She's your spunky friend. She's your friend who's like in the band and you're like, oh, she's such a cool, she's a band girl. You know? <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out Not how like Amy Winehouse band, comes but... into this. Like with the big poofy hair Tats. and like the cat eye. Tattoos, that's it? That's what you Tattoos, got? <laughs> dark hair. <laughs> And dark hair. <laughs> Similar facial shape. Hey, White House wasn't sporty at all. No, I <laughs> never said to... she was. She's your cool friend who's in a band. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Everybody has one. They're like, yeah, she's cool. She's kind of cute. <laughs> Who do you most identify with? Who are you closest to? Hmm. Hmm. That's so hard. Because mm-hmm. I think I'm like all of them. <laughs> 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 probably I can probably be a little bit like scary. I can be a little overbearing and a little loud sometimes. Mm. And a little she's aggressive. Kind of and... like, she's kind of like the life of the party in a lot of like in interviews and stuff. Like she well, oh, I don't man. know if I'm the life of the party. Well sometimes. It depends. If you're up for it. There's this great interview. Um it's a really early one. And actually I say great, but like it's kind of like cringy in moments because it's mm-hmm. pretty early on. And the interviewer, like like said like kind of like keeps like interrupting the girls while they're asking and she calls him on it she's like hey quit interrupting me or, or whatever and he's like i can interrupt you i'm the interviewer and and then she just like starts razzing him but it's like it's all like it's so funny like yeah. and all the girls like end up like just kind of like making fun of them and they're like yeah take your shirt off like yeah i don't know that sounds weird when i they say tell like him that. to take his shirt off yeah because they're like playing with them and stuff and he's talking about like oh i bet you have a six pack like show us show us prove it prove it <laughs> you know like he just he yeah. kind of like gets his own medicine like because he kind of like dishes out things like that to the girls and like talking about their bodies and so they're like all sure. right let's talk about your body let's see what you've got under that shirt oh you've got tommy hilfiger undies everybody <laughs> you know like sure. so yep. i don't know it's it's pretty fun to watch but she kind of leads a lot of that i bet you think you're most like baby uh no because you're a little child Rude. Um, Did you say what kind? You're scary. Is is that your? I don't know because I'm not the life of the party. I don't know. Mm. Who knows? Who knows? I'm Kevin in the Backstreet Boys. (laughs) Maybe a little Brian. If you're Kevin in the Backstreet Boys, that means you're posh in the Spice Girls. No, because I'm not posh. I don't care about style. You're dark and brooding and quiet. But think about the clothes that I wear. I I can't. (laughs) I'm wearing a Legend of Zelda t-shirt right now and green tech pants. Very cool. I am not posh. It matches. But I could be Kevin. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, well, if you're Kevin, Or Brian. I'm Kevin and Brian Mix. Kevin is baby. What? Kevin is baby, essentially. Kevin, no, Nick Nick Carter is no, baby. No, Nick is Nick is baby, babe. 
Nick Carter is little brother. If we're talking about the <laughs> archetypes, he's little brother. Mm. He's, him hey, right. and Lance Ginger, play the same Ginger, part. Yeah, you're right. Their baby. Ginger and AJ are the same. Who? Ginger and AJ. Yeah. Yep. Or Scary and AJ. I could go either scary, way. I, I think Scary convinced. and AJ because, yeah, yep. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, they're both so boisterous mm-hmm. in who personality. Who is Howie? Is How- Howie posh? No, maybe. Ho- Are we maybe, saying Howie is posh? Maybe Howie's no, Kevin Lance. is posh. Kevin maybe Howie is, is Howie is Lance's baby. Yeah. No, oh, no, Nick. I it's Nick. It's I'm hard. telling you, it's Nick. It's hard. There's this not a good one to one. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you like who am i like yeah who do i most identify with as a yep. spice girl um or who i would be personality wise yep and this is not about the fashion piece but just like being more reserved i would be more like the like a posh spice yep. yeah i'm See, a bit more quiet and reserved if if yeah. we take the style out i can get on board with this posh thing but like, well let's put the style in i'm also no posh. you well, you could be i'm not <laughs> <laughs> I'm sporty then. I wear whatever yeah. I want. Yeah. As a kid, Baby was my favorite, as was most 10-year-old girls. We always fought over who got to dress up as Baby mm-hmm. because, obviously, we would dress up as the Spice Girls a lot. There was one time we dressed up as the Spice Girls when we were going to a high school basketball game, yep. and we were 10, and we were so cool. Who was we? Me and my friends. You didn't have very many friends. I did. You didn't have four other friends. Yes. I had enough to make the band. <laughs> no. It was a blast. Tori and now are two of them. Who are, <laughs> no, I they believe weren't. you had two other friends. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> but yeah, we dressed up, went to the high school basketball game. I think one of my friends who dressed up as Ginger got made fun of by some high school girls and maybe got called some names. And so we ended up... I don't know, somebody bought her a sweatshirt. I think one of our moms that was there. To cover up? Yeah. Oh. Because it was just, it wasn't crazy, but it was like, you know, like they wear like those big kind of baggy pants and like yep. your midriff shows a little bit and then sure. you got like a tube top. Yep. Like it was kind of like that. But we were also 10, so maybe it looked a little silly. I think it looked a little silly, not <laughs> in hindsight, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I also dressed up again as a Spice Girls in high school. We did. You just couldn't get over it, could you? I can't. I still can't get over it. If someone tomorrow said, like, hey, we're going as the Spice Girls this year for Halloween, I'd say, you got it. Who would you be? Tell me when. I don't care. I'll be any of them except Mel B. I would not be yeah, Mel B because be that's not anymore. appropriate. Yep. Um, yeah. Didn't you learn your lesson? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, in... Are you going to ask me about this high school story? Do I should I? I want go you just to go into it. All right, I shouldn't have to ask it for it. You should just go into it. Well, I want to be asked about it. Ask me about it. Are you interested? Do you want to know about it? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> See, I just like you're hey, tell me the story. story. All right, the story. So in high school, we dressed up as the Spice Girls. It was for a dance squad event. It was kind of like an end of the year celebration and. Uh, this was my sophomore year, and my friends, yes, I had friends, and I- Not four of them. I did. You probably had to adopt some from another <laughs> friend group. We dressed up as the Spice Girls, and we lip sync and we did like a little dance for them, and it was so fun, and a teacher's- Loved it. I don't know why we did it for teachers, but they kept saying like, hey, come to my class at 10 o'clock and do that for my class. Oh, that would be even more embarrassing because you were so close. And we did it. You did it? Yeah, we stayed in our costumes and we went around. Now, granted, we had a guy dressed up as one of the Spice Girls in our group, so maybe that was kind of fun too. Sure. But See, I knew you didn't have four other friends. You had three <laughs> and then you had to do a dude. <laughs> That's my story about that. Have you ever dressed up as a Spice Girls? No. Have you ever dressed up as a boy band? No. Haven't you? No, I haven't. Have you ever dressed up as a made-up boy band? Ah, uh, yes. Mm, okay. There we are. Yeah. Tell me about that. I mean, just like you wear the white T-shirt and the white button-up, and you pretend like you're in the Backstreet Boys <laughs> music video. But like, never like, hey, I'm right now, guys. I'm Nick, or I'm Brian, or I'm AJ. Like, no, it's it was never like that. It's just you get in your boy band clothes, and that's it. That's it. That's it. There's no there's no other thing. I've danced <laughs> to boy band routines. And I guess it could feel like I'm one of them, but like if there's nine guys, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, who would want to see that? Nine yeah, guys. Was it some sort of K-pop group? <laughs> there we go. Gross. <laughs> nine boys. What? Ew. 
my you gosh. can't even keep all their names straight. That's way too many. I, you know, I always think about that with those K-pop groups. I think because sometimes there's like 14 dudes, and I always think like, how do the girls get that invested in one of them? Because there's so many of them mm. that they really their part in like a music video or in a dance routine is just like one quick thing, and then they're like done, like one little solo move with a, a little bit of song, like one lyric of song, and then they're a part of this huge massive contagion of dudes. It's like, how can you get attached to anybody? Yeah. I know. I agree. I don't know. It must be really hard for them. But they have some bops, I would say. Yeah. A couple of bops. I don't know. None no. of them really grabbed me. No? No. Hmm. So there it is. Did you know hmm. that they're, you'll be happy to know that they're in talks of making a sequel to this film? I actually did know that. How'd you know that? Because when I was trying to search for the movie, <laughs> several articles <laughs> popped up about it. I know. When I searched it, it was like four days ago, the New York Times. Yeah, it was, was like, recent. This is really yeah. recent. Yeah, sources say that the four members have approached producers for a sequel. Oh, I did. There would be- What's n- her name? Did she die? <laughs> Jerry's not dead, oh, but thank God Victoria you Beckham me is not game to do it. She's kinda, she's blonde now. Mm, she was blonde. She's not blonde anymore. You're thinking of 2007. Victoria Beckham was blonde for she's, that tour. She's she back to her regular dark, dark hair. Again? Yep. Don't worry. Okay. Did you like her better as blonde? Oh. I thought. I thought Full she. Circle. I thought she was had been coloring her hair when she was posh, and that she was really a blonde. No the opposite you were wrong she's a raven-haired beauty i think she looks great both ways <laughs> <laughs> but I, I enjoyed the blonde but you know what i probably really enjoyed is the fact that she was older because you know i'm pretty much into older women <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> but anyways the 25th anniversary of the movie is next year and so that was kind of their end date that they were trying to oh let's do a sequel that would be really fun mm-hmm. so I don't know. I don't think anything will come of it, especially if Posh isn't going to be involved in it. So who knows? But the girls are still like potentially looking at tours and things like that to come mm-hmm. out again because now it's been another 10 years since the last time that they've been. And actually, I think they were thinking about a tour in, we just talked about it already in 2021. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. But I don't think it would be Posh in it. So. Okay. Um, the Spice Girls had a musical made, a jukebox musical called Viva Forever. Okay. It ran for a year. Really? A whole year? Well, no, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it closed and opened and closed within the same year. So. Oh, see, that doesn't mean the same thing. Yeah, you're because right. Because musicals, right. musicals won't turn a profit until about like the six month mark. Ah. And so if it closed in three months, that means yeah. it was a raging failure. <laughs> I think it was that, okay. but I don't know exactly how long, but it was within the same year that it opened and closed. So, Ooh. yeah, not, did it was not reviewable. Um, they said, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want for this to be over. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. It probably closed right away then. (laughs) So there's that. All right. Back to the movie. So I'm going to dance a little bit between the two, but I think, yeah, I have the movie tiered to the end. Are you ready? Yeah, for sure. All right. The movie budget, $25 million. Whoa. That's so high. Is it? I don't know. Is it that bad when you make $100 million? Think about (laughs) it. How, like, you said this early in their career. That's why I say it's high. Yeah, that's true. Because it's earlier in their career. Yeah. And the, the money that they had to spend on this film was pretty much all talent. Because, like, they didn't mm-hmm. have to spend anything for special effects, set pieces, all that stuff. It was all just found stuff. They built a set for the inside of the bus. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of it. And all the other sets were super easy. So what could have cost so much money is purely talent. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Alan Cummings is early in his career. Mm-hmm. Meatloaf cameo, Elton John cameo. Those weren't going to cost a lot of money. The Spice Girls, that means, still commanded enough money to boost that that budget line up. I guess so. And they were early in their career. That's yeah. why I'm surprised. But it made a lot of money. Made a hundred, you said? hundred million. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this movie has won a couple of awards. No way. What awards? Razzies? It was nominated for seven Razzies. Yeah, it was. And Woo-hoo. the girls won Worst Actress. They also All shared it. All of them? It. They shared it. Yeah. Did they, did they go to the, <laughs> no, they didn't go to the ceremony because Sandra Bullock is the first one to accept her. Yeah, person. I don't think they did. Um, the 2007 UK poll said that this was the worst film ever made. Ah! 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 <laughs> that was a UK poll? Yeah, UK poll. So from their own. 
Um, and then the top 100 most enjoyably bad movies ever made on the Razzie Guide. It's in the top 100. Yep. It's probably like 50 or something like oh, that, okay. which I completely agree with. This is an enjoyably bad movie to watch. Love it. Um, also, Roger Ebert said it was the worst film of 1998 until he saw Armageddon. <laughs> he hated Armageddon I more? Know. No. Wait. Wait, that wait, 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 <laughs> Ebert didn't like Armageddon? <laughs> What's wrong with Armageddon? <laughs> Armageddon is a quality ass movie. Like, Armageddon is so freaking fun. What is he talking about? <laughs> The soundtrack is great. We've the got soundtrack Aerosmith. alone makes it fresh. Come on. Is it a ludicrous plot? Of course it is. But that's what makes it so fun. You don't send real scientists <laughs> up to this asteroid. You no. send um, a bunch of guys who drill oil. Yeah. Awesome. Duh. Who else is going to save us? Avi, because that's the easier skill to teach in this is yeah. astronauting. We've got to drill into this comet and spl- asteroid and split it in half so it dodges Earth. Pew. That plot makes so much sense to me. It And it saved the world. <laughs> it saved the and world. And it saved the world, you guys. Oh, that ending when Bruce Willis, it looks like he's going to live, but then he throws Ben Affleck out and then he gets in there and he he goes down and yep. up the elevator or whatever direction it is. <laughs> and glass elevator, who knows? It goes all around. Yep, yep. Oh, amazing. It's so good. It is. It reminds me of the end of Pearl Harbor. You're going to have a son. And then he goes, no, you you're going to have a son. It's like, ah, I'm bombing. I'm bombing. Uh, yeah, but apparently he likes Spice World better than this, wow. that movie, which is, I think it's a little crazy, obviously. Uh, Armageddon yeah? is pretty good. I can't wait to hear how you feel about this movie. That's what I can't wait for. All right. Do you want a critic's consensus? Yes, please. Critic's consensus says Spice World's lack of cohesive plot will likely lose most viewers, <laughs> but for fans of the girl group, there's more than enough fun to be had in their wacky, albeit superficial, whirlwind of an adventure. Rotten Tomatoes score, 34%. 34%. Audience, 45%. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a major twist. <laughs> That's a bit 34%. higher. 34%. Okay. That's a bit higher. All right. You want to tell me? You ready for it? Yeah. Okay. I am. I'm ready. Spice World <laughs> was some habanero for heat mixed with some paprika for color and tang. And then the most exuberant ingredient, loads of onion flakes onion minces, onion powders, and chunks of onion to make the worst potato salad I have ever tasted. 5%. My lowest score in Summers Off History. No! 5%? I would rather watch Ladybugs again. Ew! Ladybugs? It has a plot. Ladybugs? It's reverse Twelfth Night. (laughs) (laughs) Spice oh World gosh. had no plot. The bad guy, they kill the bad guy off or whatever when they just show a newspaper and they're like, newspaper guru caught in jacuzzi scheme or whatever like that. And then they're like, that whole plot's gone. They don't even try to wrap it up. It's so lazy. <laughs> the whole thing is done so lazily. It is really bad Woo! Monty Python. It is just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what <laughs> sticks. And the girls ran amok in, I'm sorry, Ginger, you did not have a perfect script. Your script... <laughs> it was almost perfect. No, it was not. It was almost the worst script I've ever seen. <laughs> Incredibly bad movie. Somewhat entertaining at times. Oh, but, yeah. But off the rails too much for me that it lost my interest mm-hmm. as I fell asleep at one point. Yeah. Contemplating you had stuff. You had a slow blink, a slow, heavy blink. Yep. So, yeah. And I had a moment where I was resting on your shoulders when Penny had fallen asleep in your arms. Our new cavalier is falling, it fell asleep in Reach's arms <laughs> no. while we watched this. Um, and I was like feeling myself really tired at that moment too. And I was like, okay, this movie has just lost me. Yeah. It has lost me. Mm-hmm. So that's the same score that you gave Friday the 13th, but it's higher than your score that you gave um, Big Trouble in Little China, which I think was a. Two percent, just so you had room to go down. Yeah, I wanted room to go, <laughs> yeah. room to move. But this is the le- the lowest score for me. 
below Ladybugs. Yeah. Yeah, you did not come to play, I'll say. But I wanted to like it. I think you wanted to like it too much that that backfired and then you Maybe. were looking for something that it wasn't. I think you were looking for like some like glimmer of like brilliance when you just needed to come and just enjoy. But it was just so, okay, I can't be entertained when it's like, Oh, baby, you always give those cute looks. Cut to, like, horror movie detective scene where a guy's, like, interrogating a bunch of random characters. We've never seen any of these people before. And then he looks at baby, and she's holding a knife. Like, it's obviously she killed him, and she gives him that look, and he goes, Oh, it's not you. It's so-and-so. Like, come on. That was boring. Or the the <laughs> dance guy, the dance military guy. Which is, what? He's great! No, that is, like, the worst Monty. That's so Monty Python, but it's, like, the worst Monty <laughs> Python skit of all time. It was just that... And then the orgasmic manager who's having orgasms when he gets all worked up. That's not a thing. Oh, yeah, it was. <laughs> and then the newspaper guy and his like crazy overacting to the point where I wanted to blow him up off the screen. Just too much. It was too much for me. Brits? It's called a farce tie. You missed me again, Brits. <laughs> it's another miss. I'll be honest. I'm going to raise my score. Oh, just to be of spite. Spite. No. Tell me your original score first before you raise it, though. I won't. No, do it. Never. <laughs> yeah, tell me. My score? Original score or ready? A new one? Are you ready? R- original or Quit new? I'm trying to hold my mouth shut. <laughs> original I'm going to tell you. Original or new? People need to know. My score for this 45%. Wow. Tied with. Double Dragon. No. Yes. You did that to spite me. No. Yeah, you did. Yes. Raise Raise Double Dragon score right now. 45%. Hey, raise Double Dragon score right now. Double Dragon. <laughs> Double Dragon. Double, Double Dragon. dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Spice up your life. <laughs> no. That show was... Paper Love of War. Double Dragon was so much more fun. So many more quotes. Ah, uh, <laughs> slam it to the left. Having a good time. Shake it to the left. You know you feel fine. <laughs> Uh, 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 go uh, yeah, it was a good time. Forty five percent, loved it, loved it, loved it. If you yeah, loved, it's oh, an awful bad movie. But, but according to your fresh and rotten, you said fresh starts at forty six percent. So like, even it for you, it's almost, rotten. It was almost fresh. It is rotten, <laughs> but it's such a good time. I don't care. I would watch it again. I'll probably watch it again tomorrow. I'll just download more viruses on whatever no, computer are I you can gonna, find. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. We really should own this hey, movie. Hey, was that your original score? It's a little bit higher. But what not was much. your original? 40. Below Double Dragon. That's Wait. the real score, ladies and gentlemen. It's 40%. When I put it on the record books, I'm going to put 40% down. Nope. Ty. Hey, Ty. Future Ty. Listen to me. She said 40%. Just so you know. Below her Double Dragon. <laughs> hey, and while you're at it, bumper Double Dragon is 60. <laughs> Gosh, well, viewers, um, thanks for sticking with us. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed. It was it was a great review of the Spice Girls in general too. It wasn't just the movie; like you got a little bit of movie. But it was there, very little movie. I only movie, had two pages of. movie. If we were gonna do notes. the movie, it was only gonna be a half hour episode. And I know you guys like these really deep, long episodes. We got so like, into it. You know, we had to get into the Spice Girls. Oh, yeah. in their background. So. Oh yeah. Good luck finding this film if you want to rewatch. Yeah, it's um, gonna be hard for you, but yeah, good luck. I, yeah. Otherwise, just listen to the albums. I think that'll take you back, and you'll enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next week, mm-hmm. we have. Oh, I didn't even wait. Get did in... you say who you think is the hottest out of the Spice Girls? No, because I don't rank them on superficial things like their looks. I rank on people based on talent or based on like that's not what I'm asking. who I am as a person, we who I identify do, we with. We always do hot scale. Who's the most attractive? Yeah, Adam we did it in Lost. You ranked everybody. I... Oh, by the way, a guy who works at the pla- at my plasma center looks just like the man from Black from Lost, the ghost smoke monster. I swear he looks just like him. I never the want you to meet him. black t-shirt guy? Yeah, you'd like him. <laughs> you would like him. <laughs> so you have a question for me? Yeah, it was who's the hottest out of them for you? Um, I think I think Posh is probably still the hottest out of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? No, that's it. You didn't even ask what Spice Girl I dressed. I know you were interested in that story. You didn't even ask what Spice Girl I dressed up as in high school. Oh, I thought you said it, and I thought I missed it. No, no I didn't joke. Say it. No joke. I thought, oh, she said which Spice Girl it was. I'll have to listen to it when we <laughs> when you release this episode because <laughs> I don't remember who she said. I thought you just plugged it in. Nope. Who were you? I was posh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Thought you should know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ooh, so next week, yep. we have, we're sta- staying in kind of like the same theme, right? So we did Godfather 1 Godfather and Godfather 2, two yep. and now we're doing Spice World and Crossroads. Yes, yes, yes. Crossroads starring who, Ty? Britney Spears. Brit, brat. A brat and that's bars, bot. <laughs> yes. So it's going to be a good time. Oh, guys. Going along with I how I looked at this movie. I, we shouldn't get into this already, but I looked at this movie in the movie theater. Not in the movie theater. In the movie store. I'd pass by it <laughs> over and over again. I'd always be longing for it. Mm. But embarrassed because I was with friends or with my mom. And it was like, oh, I can't rent it. But I want it so bad. <laughs> It's finally going to happen. <gasps> Dreams really do come true. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, listeners, until next time. When the speeding melon hits the wall, no! it's Christmas for the crows. What did he say? I haven't a clue.